Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. Over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holliman and Dora Trello. How y'all doing, ladies? Good morning, Chief. Good morning. How are you? Hey, I got a funny story before we start this interview because uh, <laughs> it, it, it's all it's always happens to me, right? So you know, I have my script up so we can, uh, you know, I can follow along with the show. And I, and I'm as as Todd is kind of going to uh, going to the show and, and starting stuff. I'm reading like the first line and it says something about Magic Mike. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I next guess was not on Magic Mike, and so I got the wrong script up. I had Channing Tatum's script up, so it was That's so while, while he was while he was going through all the stuff, I had to hurry up and bring the script up. But I'm I'm good to go now. So uh, without all I just right. had to share that story because I was laughing inside. I was like, I need to get this out of my system before we start this. <laughs> But we have although an awesome guest today. Mind. I was, was going to say, although we wouldn't mind, it's okay. But we're happy about our, our real oh, yeah, guest yeah. today. Yeah, we, no, yeah. We, have a, we have a way better guest than Shannon Tatum today. Uh, but so without further ado, Dora, please introduce the next guest. Yes, sir. Today's guest was named 2019 Army Spouse of the Year. And in 2020, she earned the Hiring Our Heroes Small Business Entrepreneur Impact Award. She's also the executive producer and host of the Military Homemaker Show, Moving with the Military. She's here today to discuss her online show, her philanthropy, and her dedication to improving the quality of life for America's armed forces. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to Maria Reed. Hey. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, but you got me. You got me, Mike. Magic Mike. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, I think I had too many scripts up uh, before I started the show, but uh, and I from closed the wrong one, so I got. I, may, I was gonna say, from time to time, I may bust out in a dance, but it's not like. Hey. That. <laughs> Listen, we, we got we got genuine ready ready to play. All I got to do is hit play. We got genuine. <laughs> <laughs> So, so welcome, welcome to the show, Maria. We're happy to have you with us today. Uh, can you let our viewers know where you're joining us from? Thank you so much for having me. I really do appreciate it. We are right here in Texas at Fort Hood, right, right in Fort Hood. Oh, oh Colleen, Texas. Oh. Yeah, we're just, we actually live just outside of Colleen. So we're over in like the Coppers Cove area, but it's all, you know, it's Fort Hood. It's right here. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm actually out there pretty often, Maria, so we'll have to hang some time. <laughs> Please, yes, and thank you. Coffee, anytime, <laughs> whatever. I am I am ready for it. No, I love it. Um, also, we had a chance to talk um, just a, several weeks ago, but your story of becoming a military spouse is so touching. Um, you actually met your husband while you were working as a commercial producer. Um, so could you tell us what was it like dating an active duty soldier? And when did you two decide to commit to each other for life? And, and, keep, and um, Maria, well, please keep in mind, I'm an active duty uh, military member before you start bashing us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just messing with never, you. never gonna bash. Never, never gonna bash. Um, uh, it was. I, I had actually met my husband in Florida. He was on um, like a ten day leave, and he was seeing his grandmother. How cute is that, right? Um, and we met, and I immediately was like, no, and no, I, I knew nothing about the mil. I knew nothing about the military. I mean, everything I knew about the military was. Top Gun. So I'm just like, yeah, no, I, I no. And there was just going to go no further. But he is very charming, incredibly charming, and could write a heck of a letter because this was before, you know, the whole cell phone. I mean, we had cell phones. I'm not that old, but we didn't have, you know, like uh, iPhones or anything. And, and it just, email was a thing. Yeah, we emailed, but he would just call and we would talk and then you know, one day I, I was actually directing a music video in uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. But coming from Florida, I think everything is far. To get to another state is at least six to seven hours. So we were never going to see each other. But I called him and I said, hey, 
I'm in town-ish, I'm in another state, I'm in Nashville, I'm um, filming a music video, uh, where, are you, you know, how close is Fort Campbell to Nashville? And he's like, 45 minutes, wanna meet for dinner? I was just wow. like, okay, oh, <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> so we meet for dinner, then he takes me and tours me to uh, Clarksville and Fort Campbell. I had never seen anything like that. And all the service members, and they were so, to me, they looked like they were so young. The babies. I'm like, oh my gosh, these are these are children. What's you know? So it was just such a, a, a you know fast and furious introduction into the military. But uh, you know, that's kind of how we met. That is so cool. He got you with those letters. That's awesome. It, it's nostalgic. <laughs> I know. It's romantic. Well, yes. Maria, as a military spouse, you know firsthand the challenges that they face. And of course, you found out that your husband was deploying shortly after your wedding. So take us through that moment when you first arrived at Fort Campbell. OK, well, um, so we dated for about six months and then he proposed. But I thought the proposal, you know, and the, the, we were going to wait, you know, a year, plan a wedding, all these things. But I learned very quickly, you know, things change very fast in the military um, and he he came back after having been in Jordan and said, I want to get married. And I said, I know you proposed, we're getting married in like a year. And he's like, no, I want to get married next week. And I went, Man. okay, you know, right. What's happening. So we, we planned a wedding in a week. Everything was like super speed. And then, you know, I stay back in Florida. He goes um, back to Fort Campbell and then calls, calls me and says, I oh, look, I'm already getting emotional. Stop. Um, yeah. He calls me and says, I need you to, to come up here. Um, I have something to tell you. And I'm thinking to myself, no, you're, you're renting a truck and you're getting out of the military and you're coming down to Florida because we're, we just bought a house, right? And he said, well, not exactly. Things ha are different. And then I get up there and this image will never leave my mind. I'm pulling up to, uh, you know, the brigade and just, it was a sea of green duffel bags. This mm. was, it, they were just like mount, mini mountains. And I see him walking and all the other service members are standing there at parade rest. And I'm like, is this a movie? Being a director, I'm like, I can't even make this stuff up. This is, what is happening here? And he's walking over and like the world just seemed to go in slow motion. And he told me at that moment, um, I've been stop lost. I didn't even know what that was. I'm like, please talk to me in a language that I understand because I don't know what this is. I don't know all your acronyms, what's going on. And he says, I'm going to leave and I don't know when or if I will come back. Wow. And you're like, Thanks. why are you telling me all this? You know, and, and it was just like, we've got to do all these things really quickly. And, and it just, it stuck with me because then I'm looking, here I go, I'm crying. I look at all the faces and they're like 18, 19. This was the very beginning of OIF1. They were on their way. And he couldn't tell me a lot. He said, I just have to go. And I was like a mess. Then they all start leaving. I get in my car and I'm driving off going, what just happened to my life? But before he left, I had to tell him that he was going to be a dad. And he needed oh, to come man. home. Man. Yikes. So it Ooh. was just, I saved my life. And my life isn't, my story isn't unusual. You talk to so many military spouses and they'll say the same thing. Oh yeah, he was getting ready to deploy and I had to tell him I was pregnant or whatever. It's, it's not an unusual story, but it's that story that I think connects us and brings us all together. Okay, I was so trying hard not to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, Maria, you got us all in the fields and we haven't even got, made it to question three or four yet. So, man, it's like you said, that, that is a very amazing story, uh, a, a story that uh, resonates with so many people uh, going through that situation. And, and it's, it's even you know harder for the for the military member to because because we understand the impact it has on our family. And so uh, we, we don't do what we do without family or, or the people we work around and all this other stuff. So uh man it's it, it's tough to 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 kind of experience that uh at in the moment but it's such a beautiful moment when you kind of look back on it uh 
you know, 10 years down the road. So uh, thank you for sharing that. So, so here at the exchange, 20 years, 20 years. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. This year is our 20th wedding anniversary. That's awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. So uh, now he can retire, right? No, I'm just kidding. I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not. <laughs> He's like, I'm not. So now at the exchange, we offer uh, resources to make PCS season easier on military families. So how did you adapt to military life and what resources did you find helpful for military spouses whose spouses was deployed, were deployed? Oh, mercy. That's such a long question. And if I get long winded, just cut me off at some point and say, OK, uh, I, I felt like it was induction by fire. So yeah. many things yeah. happened so quickly. And then um, he actually, after uh, OIF1, he came back and he got out of the military. He thought he was done. And I remember his friend who was a recruiter at the time uh, said, if he doesn't come back in 18 months, he's not coming back. He's done. And I was like, OK. Uh, four and a half years later, he came back. And I went, what happened to the 18 months? So, <laughs> so now. We're at this, you know, th this mark of starting this military life. And, and I'm a resourceful person. Like I said, I've been a director. I had my own business. We, had, we have children now. You know, I'm like, I can do anything. And we get to our first duty station, which was Fort Stewart. And I literally felt paralyzed. I, I was like, I don't know anyone. What do I do? How, how do I make friends? What, what, what do we do? What are all these things? What do you mean we're going to PCS again in, in three years? But what I think I do is I go down that rabbit hole really quick of research and try and figure things out and put them in into some kind of place. Like, where is this going to go? What are we going to do next? And start creating lists and binders. And one thing that I learned is to save. As soon as you get to your new duty station, start saving for the next one. So oh, we wow. always had that financial cushion in case, because you never know what could happen. Um, but resources that my, my biggest resource that I found was other military spouses, talking, having those conversations and not being afraid to ask. Because I remember I walked up to someone and I was like, hi, uh, I'm new. Uh, I need an emergency contact. And I don't even know what that means. But hi, can we be friends? And yeah. they were like, Absolutely. I, I, we're, we're in the same boat. I get that. You'll be my child's emergency contact. And we just became best friends. And we are still, uh, Melissa, we are still friends today. <laughs> She's in Germany now. And, uh, and, and that, that was one of my greatest resources was, was talking and connecting with other people that could then point me to. You need to go here. You need to go there. But there were lots of different. Um, there's so many. They're great resources. But I felt like there's so many that it gets overwhelming. So with an Air Force spouse, she and I actually developed an app called the My Ultimate PCS app, which Ooh. puts it all into lists for you. It helps guide you. What do you need to do at 120 days out, 90 days out, 60 days out, two weeks out, one week moving day, so that it would kind of help and we wouldn't all be like deer in the headlights like this, like I was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I do have like a declaration that I would love to like say on the show right now because uh, I, I know as a military member that um, norm, a lot of the times, and I won't say all, all the time, but a lot of times once we get home, we don't talk military. Uh, I know specifically, I don't, I don't talk to my wife about military stuff. So, uh, but I think about the, the 18, 19 year old spouse who just left mom's house and they're, they're off in this brand new place that doesn't know anything about anything. And then the husband or, or wife comes home and doesn't really even talk about military or, or those resources that are available, they deploy and you're like, okay, what, what's the first sergeant? I'm never, I don't know what the heck that is, but there's so many resources out there that, that sometimes we as military members don't share. So if you're a military member out there, you're watching, please talk to your spouse, you know, just talk to them every once in a while, specifically about stuff that's going to help them uh, when you're not there. So uh, there's my yeah. plea. To, I will, to us I, members. very nice. I will say, I got to give my husband props. He did tell me a lot of information and where to go and make sure you get involved in the SFRG and, and ask questions because that's going to be your first line of information on, on all the things that you need, especially during, you know, a deployment. Um, but I wanted to go to a lot of the meetings that he was in and he would tell me, you can't come like <laughs> it's not for you. 
And I'm like, wait a minute, but I'm, I'm the one doing all this. What do you mean it's not for me? He's like, no, it's for me. And then I will relay the information to you. I've always found that weird, not hating. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you, and you're absolutely right. Just one more point before we move on to the next topic. But uh, I think military units need to do a better job of indoctrinating the whole entire family into the unit. I think when we when we in process into a unit, uh, they take us all of these places. They show us all these places, but uh, they don't really uh, indoctrinate the spouses and the kids really into the actual unit, the mission and the different resources they have on base. I think they can do a better job. I think some bases do it better than others, but there's some, some installations where, uh, you know, the military member just gets all the love and they have to relay that information to a spouse or hand them a booklet or something at the end of the day that never makes it home. So uh, just big plea for big, a big Air Force, big Army, big Space Force, big Marines, big everybody. Uh, let's do a better job of indoctrinating our military families into uh, a new organization. Over. Well, it would be helpful. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Love it. No, Maria, we commend your bravery, tenacity, and your desire to help others. In fact, your career and achievements are rooted in your desire to make sure that military families have the information and support that they need. And we see this demonstrated on your show, Moving with the Military. So how did the idea of the show come about? Well, um, I, as we said earlier, um, I've worked in television pretty much my whole life. And then when I met my husband and you know, got into this military life, I immediately realized that this was not going to be an easy task for me to stay in the film industry. Um, you know, we had small children. He was constantly deployed or TDY or somewhere. Somebody had to be home. Who's going to raise these kids? So it, it's me. I'm mom. And I gave up my career in the film industry and I became a high school teacher and I was teaching kids. And I just will preface, I love high school kids. They're awesome. They can be stubborn, but they will learn. Um, and they, uh, I taught them film production, Photoshop, uh, social media management, just all the different um, sort of communication type uh, classes. And I love, love teaching them. Um, and one of them, actually one day, I was saying my idea for the show and that I couldn't do it and it was gonna be really hard. And that student actually used on me the line I always said to them. You have all the tools in front of you. It is so easy today with YouTube and your cell phones to make anything. If it's in your mind, you can make it happen. There's nothing stopping you but you. When those words are repeated to your face from a 16 <laughs> year old, you know, quickly you go, you're absolutely right. Because I was thinking of it as when I was a producer, you know, big productions, this is big millions of dollars. I don't have it. But I realized I don't need the millions of dollars. What I need is the hard work and tenacity to make that happen. So I did, even though a lot of the big networks were like, you're crazy. You don't have the millions of dollars. You can't do it. And I was just like, well, watch me. We're, we're going to make it happen because the mission <laughs> is the most important thing. The military family is the most important thing. The rest will come. What's that line from that movie? If you build it, they will come. They will come. Yeah. And and so we started building the show. I told my husband, I'll never forget it. It was uh, December nineteenth, two thousand sixteen. I said, I'm getting back in the film business, honey. I'm creating a show. And he's like, Awesome. I support you. I started, stayed up, seventy two hours, built the website, did a strategic plan, built all the social media. Came back and said, Look, I have not slept. I am a genius. And I am going to do this show. And he said, I love you. I believe in you. By the way, I'm deploying in 30 days. Thought this would oh be the gosh. perfect time. So oh, we yes. did the uh, the first, the, our first episode, our first year of uh, moving with the military while he was deployed. So yeah, all things are possible. Yeah. Well, Maria, it sounds like every time you got a milestone going on, he gets a deployment order. So you might want to stop the milestones in your life. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Of course. Well, Chief always chokes jokes that we uh, we have a fifteen dollar budget on this show. Like oh, each yeah. of us puts in our five dollars, so it's amazing <laughs> what you can do these days. So, <laughs> well, it, it the really show is. Does, really, I, yeah, it, it it is. The show captures the story, um, the stories of America's heroes. You know, from surviving mm -hmm. spouses to veterans. You've turned houses into homes for those who have served since 2017. So what inspires you to give back to the military community? 
Um, I think it's it's because I live it. I see it mm -hmm. every day. Whatever installation we're at, I see the struggles that families go through. I even look back at at our own, not wanting me, not wanting to put up any artwork on the walls or even unpack boxes. Like I, I got to the, the point in my own life where I said, why bother? We're gonna move again. But you know, our daughter, she she just did it for me. Um, one day she wanted to paint the walls of her room pink. We were at Fort Stewart. And the only thing I could think of right away was, oh no, because we're gonna have to paint it back when we move, so no. But then I, I, I saw her face and I was like, wait a minute, she, it's her room. She is living this life with us. This is her memories that are being made. It's a can of paint, you know, and, and today you have removable wallpaper, it's even faster. But I'm yeah, just exactly. like, it's their lives, it's their memories for however long we're there, eight months, to three years, five years. I don't think we're ever mm -hmm. leaving Fort Hood. <laughs> Both of our kids got <laughs> high school stabilization, so it feels like we're going to be here forever. But it, you know, I really was impacted by wanting children and families to feel like they were a part of this too. They're not just a dependent, you know, and I understand we are dependents. I get it. But this is their life too. And it was very important for me to put those smiles on those faces because creating the makeovers, creating the space. And, and I think you said it, uh, what we're creating is not just a space, we're creating home because that's such a weird word for military families because you go home, well, what is home? Is it where I came from? Is it where we're gonna do our final home? You know, our forever home or is it, and to me, it's all of it. It's everywhere you've been, everywhere you go, that's home. So to make these spaces into a home was really important because you never know where someone's at in their life and, and it can really change the trajectory. And everyone we have ever done a makeover for has always wanted to be a part of giving back to the next family. How can I be a part of it? How can I volunteer? How, what can I do to give back? And that is the power of, of change right there. Yes, because when, when you bless people, they bless others. And that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, comp, that's a compound interest that, that kind of lasts forever. So uh, thank you for that. So Maria, you've received the 2019 Army Spouse of the Year, and I can totally see why. Uh, and, 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 the 20, <laughs> and the 2020 Hiring Our Hero Small Business Entrepreneur Impact Award. So as we know, uh, military spouses face challenges when it comes to employment. So how did you get your start as an entrepreneur? Um, I think I've always kind of had that mindset to be an entrepreneur to, um, you know, and it's funny because my husband's in the military. I don't take orders well. So <laughs> I kind of always thought I need to be my own boss and, and do that. But, you know, being um, a military spouse, I learned quickly nobody wanted to hire me. So even becoming a teacher, we need teachers. You know, I have a skill set that I can impart to students. I would always get asked that question. Oh, what brings you to this town? Hmm. And that was always the question of, are you military? You know, how long have you been here and when are you leaving? So to see whether or not that they would hire me. And I used to answer that question, whether I'm here eight months or 10 years, the impact that I can make in the lives of the students that I'm teaching, you, you can't put a, a price on that and you won't be able to put a time limit on that. And to this day, still from the day I started teaching, I am still friends with those kids. In fact, one of them is a pilot in the Air Force, um, married with children now. And I still see him as, you know, Hunter, back in the day when he would do the, our little morning show at school. But it's, it's, it's difficult to find jobs as military spouses. It really is. So entrepreneurship made sense because I can take it wherever I go. If I do well, you know, it's all me. If I didn't do well, it's all me, you know? So mm -hmm. it, it, it made sense for our family for me to do that. And, you know, there, there are many opportunities, you know, I hate to say it, COVID has really made an impact in remote, allowing for remote work. Um, like we're all in different states right now doing this, this live. So it, it's really helped with that, um, you know, creating a TV show, I don't know if I recommend that to everyone because there it's hard and it can be very costly. Um, but you know, it, it was what I 
thrived in. It's what I wanted to do. So entrepreneurship was absolutely the road for me. So Maria, like you, there are many military spouses who are choosing to start their own businesses. Mm -hmm. Right now, the military community is watching us live, as you know. So what would you like to say to those spouses who want to pursue entrepreneurship? Uh, the number one thing I would tell them is become a member of AMSI. Uh, AMSI is, is just the Association of Military Spouse Entrepreneurs. That will help you leaps and bounds. It's a community of military spouses, mentors who've done it, who are doing it, who are just getting started. So you will find your people and you will find all the resources that you need. I highly recommend that. So mad shout out to Moni Jefferson, uh, the Air Force spouse who, who started the program, but absolutely. Um, and, and don't be afraid. I know when someone hears or someone says, I'm gonna start my own business, immediately they think I'm gonna be a millionaire by the time I'm 25. No, you're going to probably work more than you ever have in your life. Um, there is no off time. There is no downtime. I do recommend sending boundaries, though, because you have to find your downtime. But, you know, entrepreneurship can be absolutely fulfilling. You can make a lot of money. Um, there are some military spouse entrepreneurs that have, have done it that are doing great, you know, but it, it's, it's a lot of work. But I do think it is very helpful, whether it's a, like a small Etsy business or, you know, a big, you know, Forbes 500 company. You, you can do it. It just it takes work and it takes will and our favorite word of the day, tenacity. Tenacity. Well, you are a, an inspiration so to a lot of military spouses. So that's great you know, advice for them. I'm sure they'll take it to heart. As a matter of fact, we have um, you're getting a lot of love on our on our feed on our Facebook feedback. Um, we have some comments and we've got David Kerr. He said he did the same thing as your husband proposed and married three weeks later and they've been married 24 years. So congratulations to them. Yes. yes. I know. And then of course, um, I think they had their dreaded stop loss a couple times as well. Um, Patricia Smith is, is watching. She said she got to hug her son after two years this weekend and her granddaughter, so a lot, you know, um, they're just excited to see you on the show. They were talking about um, Fort Hood and how big it is. It takes a whole day to just get across Fort Hood. Um, For real. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, let's see. We've got, um, I had one other comment here I wanted to um, share with you. It just says, um, they, uh, I'm sorry about this. I had one that I had pulled up and I wanted to share with you. But um, I, yes, Emily. I, 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 oh, we found it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Emily, she just loves watching your military home makeovers and all your fun reels on Instagram. So we have a lot of fans watching today. Thank you. I, I hope my son is not, you know, sitting in school right now going, oh, no, because I pull him quite often to dance with me um, on reels on Instagram. Oh. It's just, he's a sport. I did want to say, if I could briefly, I, I felt like the question that you asked before about entrepreneurship, like I, I was kind of turning people away from it. Not at all. I just wanted to clarify that. Not at all, because I heard that a lot. I heard you can't do it. You're not going to make it. It's going to be too difficult. And I did it anyway, um, not to spite them, but to prove that I could because the mission was important to me. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that that I said that I, I think entrepreneurship is definitely important and powerful for military spouses. Well, Maria, it seems like you're doing everything, like literally everything. Mom, uh, sp uh, mom, spouse, uh, entrepreneur, just every school teacher, all kind of other things. And you're also a co-founder of the Inspire Up Foundation. Um, You've teamed up with other military spouses to provide support to other spouses. The support extends beyond monetary donations. Your foundation even caught the attention of Hoda Kotb and uh, Jenna Bush Hager, uh, who we have Jenna Bush Hager on the show later on this month. Just wink, wink, plug, plug. Uh, so can you tell us <laughs> about the, the Giving Tuesday Acts of Kindness project and its success? Absolutely. So because we all felt this need when I say we, um, it's three other military spouses, Stacy Bilodeau, Jess Manfrey, who were both national, I'm uh, sorry, Coast Guard spouses of the year, and Samantha Gamolka, who is the uh, National Guard spouse of the year. Um, 
we all felt this need to give back and to help in any way that we could. So we decided to create the Inspire Up Foundation to do just that, to inspire up military spouses, kids, a generation of people to do good. So when we started the idea of Inspire Up, it wasn't about money because um, oftentimes we don't have it. Let's be real, you know, but yeah, we can all we can all give. So we reached out to Giving Tuesday and they were like, absolutely. We've been wanting to do something with a military component. So we created Giving Tuesday Military, which is always the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. So you have your Black Friday. What is it? Cyber Saturday something Monday. or Small Business Cyber Saturday, Monday. Cyber Monday yeah. and then Giving Tuesday. So the Giving Tuesday military component encourages military families to give, for them to give back in acts of kindness. Um, whether it's, you know, we, one way is to buy the, we say pay it backwards, buy the person behind you a cup of coffee and they don't even know. I love to do that and I'm like, just rushing off in my car. <laughs> and then like, you know, they're, they're just so happy, you make someone's day holding someone's door open, saying nice words to them. Um, we give a lot to uh, uh, members who are homeless. We give, uh, we got the students here at Fort Hood at Coppers Cove High School, the junior ROTC went and they gave to the service members at Fort Hood. So they had this spread of coffee and bagels and just all kinds of breakfast goodies. And before school, so this was early, it was at 5.30, six o'clock in the morning before school, they were out there talking to the service members to get their insight, but so that they felt that they were heard, that the service members being heard by the young community. Uh, we had cleanup projects going, um, painting houses for the elderly. I mean, if you can imagine collecting coats and scarves. We did everything we could in communities across the globe. So the reason we were on Hoda and Jenna, um, and we didn't know it till we got there, uh, they were counting like, the number of acts that were happening, we were hoping for 1 million on that day. And before the end of the day, or I think before we even got on their show, it was already at three, 2.5 million. Wow. wow. And, it was, and it was still going, this was just people. And how do we track that number? It was through social media. We asked people to post and say, share what it meant to them to be kind, to give back, to do something good. I almost forgot, there was one where uh, high school um, students, she was actually Miss High School America. I hope I get it right. Um, but they put post-it notes on all the mirrors in the bathrooms with words of affirmation and kindness for young women, body positivity, and for young men as well. And I was just like, yes, 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 yes. I couldn't, I, that's exactly what we wanted it to be, was a, a movement of giving to our military members, our military members giving back to our civilians, just so that we just have a kinder world. And and now we're in, this is year four? Wow, that's crazy, wow. Yeah. three or four. Awesome. <laughs> now that's great. And um, your foundation also hosts a conference for military spouses. So what can the military community expect from your next conference? Well, Glad you asked that question because our first <laughs> conference was it was incredible. We were in uh, Fort uh, Leavenworth area. We did it at, um, at with our friends at Radisson, and it was a day. So you like checked in in the first day. Then it was a full re reception. Then it was a full se second day, and then a half day. So we wanted to be longer, and that's what we heard from everyone. Was this was so amazing? Can we have more days? So that is our goal for our next conference is to have more days. And, and it was just, I'm trying to, to put it into words because it was truly impactful um, having the opportunity. So if anybody who's watching was there, write your comments, let people know how it was for you because working the back end and being a teacher, sometimes you, you, you're so busy doing the things that you're not seeing it from someone else, someone else's perspective or in enjoying it because you're working so much. But it was about giving military spouses and first responder spouses an opportunity to connect, to learn um, different skill sets. We had the uh, a Coast Guard chef who is one, I believe, like top chef. Um, he was there uh, teaching how to make you know different items. You know, a lot of young people say they don't even know how to cook. 
So this is a great opportunity to, you know, to come and learn. Um, and it was learning so many different things from uh, personal development. In my class, it was DIYs. We were giving away power tools. Some people had never used power tools before. So it was just a great opportunity to learn and to connect and to realize you are not alone in this. That's amazing work the foundation is doing for sure. So, well, we have um, a question about an upcoming episode because okay. um, of course here at the exchange, we're celebrating month of the military uh, child this month. And as a military mom, we know this is also an exciting month for you. Um, now it's also Autism Awareness Month. Um, we hear there's a special episode of Moving with the Military featuring a young hero with autism. Can you give us a little bit or a sneak peek about that episode? Oh, my little guy, Cruz, he is awesome. Uh, his, his mama, Valerie, um, is a veteran. She was a combat medic in the Air Force. And when we reached out to her, um, you know, as, as moms, we'd never think of ourselves. And immediately she was like, nothing for me. You know, I, I want I would love something if, if, if I can for my son. So I reached out to Brittany Bacher, who's also an Air Force spouse. She was a the military spouse of the year in 2017, um, an incredible woman. And she's the mom of a special needs child. Uh, her son is has Down syndrome and is also autistic. And so it was her brain that immediately knew what needed to go into the space. So we created a sensory room for Cruz to really, um, for him to be able to feel uh, comfort and, and just his space that's his own with the things that speak to him. And I, I it was such a beautiful space. And then um, we had to surprise mom as well, because that's how we roll. And, <laughs> and she got a beautiful space. So I can't wait for that episode. And, and we got to see one of the um, therapies that uh, Cruz um, gets and it's uh, through eQuest. It's an equine therapy, and watching him ride was just—it was magical. It really was truly magical. There's a very special bond between horse and human. We talk about that in the episode, so it's pretty cool. Awesome, awesome. Please, please tune in and big shout out to Cruz, uh, uh, little guy. So, uh, Maria, we can't really thank you enough for what you do for the military community on your show. Uh, our calendars are marked to tune in to this month's episode. What can fans expect from future episodes? Oh, Lord. Yes, a loaded question. There's so much happening. We just, we just got We nosy. Started. We are nosy on this side. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you insight into, into two of them. Uh, we just okay. did an episode for a disabled uh, retired Green Beret. It was amazing, absolutely beautiful. We got him to cry. This big six foot three <laughs> dude. I'm like, he's not gonna cry. He's not. Yes, yes, we did. Travis, I love you, but we got you to cry. And then uh, we went out to Atlanta to the Veterans Empowerment Organization, which is a facility, a transition facility for female, female homeless veterans in Atlanta. And we designed 14 spaces just to see all of the volunteers come out from caliber home loans and work and give with with just so much emotion it was it was beautiful and to see how fast they worked um it was like you know smiles and happiness no one ever got angry that the furniture didn't get built easily <laughs> but it was it was so great to have that community come together they just had their ribbon cutting that episode will actually air in july um and it, it was just, it was, it was amazing. And to see those veterans come out and know that this is their space. It is a safe space and it's going to be for them. Again, can't put a price on that. It's just, it's beautiful. No, nope. we can't wait to watch. Thanks for all the exclusives. We feel really special. <laughs> no. Well, yeah. And, you know, actually to, to help us celebrate America's Youngest Heroes, you have provided a few prizes to give away today for a few lucky viewers. Um, what are you giving away? Well, I was very fortunate enough to, to teach with some amazing people and to have friends who are teachers. So I have the Freedom Train, All Aboard America's Freedom Train book. You can see it right there. Um, Kathy Maggart is my friend. She's one of the co-writers and it is such a fun book. 
there's a picture book and a chapter book depending on the age groups of um, our winners. So we'll be able to give, you know, depending on their age group, either the chapter book or the picture book, but we're gonna be giving away five. And I don't know what the rules are. What are the rules of our contest? <laughs> well, actually, um all you have to, all our viewers have to do in order to enter your giveaway is to comment in the chat below you know their name and who they are going to give this amazing book to and then we can um give it over to you and, and maybe you can choose some of our um our contestants oh that would be fun so yes guys comment put the name down who and, and an age would be great because that just helps um you know to know which one but I, absolutely it's month of the military child as obviously I'm wearing my purple, feels a little more burgundy, but it's my purple. I wear purple <laughs> almost every day this month to support military kids. We're even doing some uh, food videos, some live Facebook videos with kids who cook, uh, military kids, and uh, we're gonna be learning their recipes. I hope there's some purple food in there, but uh, yeah, please comment with the name of a child that you're nominating um, so we can pick our five winners. Yes, please do. The book again is called All Aboard America's Freedom Train. It's written by Kathy Maggart and Kathy Ed, Ed, is it Edson? Edison. Edison and illustrated by John McGregor. So five lucky winners. And all you have to do is um, to enter is comment in the chat below with the name and the age of the person that you want to receive this book. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. As a reminder for our viewers, you can watch Moving with the Military on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Farm and Ranch TV. New episodes air monthly. Maria, before we say goodbye, where can viewers go to keep up with you and all of your projects? Well, we encourage them all to come on over to social media, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, it's at Moving with the Military, our Pinterest, Moving WT Mill, because they don't give me enough characters to write out Moving with the Military. Um, and obviously also on our website, but our, our biggest thing is about communication and connecting and conversations. So ask questions. I was asked questions today about PCSing overseas with a dog. Um, we had never PCS overseas, but I went and found that information for them so that they could, you know, figure out what it is that they would need to do to be able to PCS with their, their furry friends. But we get asked questions and, and we love answering them and helping in any way that we can. So we're here, reach out, connect. Also for our Chit Chat viewers, this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify. You can rewatch with your friends or catch up on past episodes. Mm -hmm. Also, be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m. on Thursday, April 14th, when we welcome Arthur James Rollins. Also, join us live at 11 a.m. on Thursday, April 21st, when Karate Kid and Cobra Kai star Martin Cole, a.k.a. Sweep the Leg, Mr. Sweep the Leg, uh, joins the chat. <laughs> so, so Maria, my I was goodness. Ready. I got it. But... To say somebody, uh, you know, I, I've known you for like 45 minutes now. Uh, and to say somebody is like, I know exactly. This is truly your calling. Like I can see the passion. I can see the excitement. Um, I know you probably would have been an awesome video director for a bunch of music videos for, for, for all the stars that are right now. But I'm so happy that you gave your husband a chance and, and uh, <laughs> we're able to kind of bring those talents to the military community because I couldn't really see you doing anything else. Like just, just like I said, 45 minutes in and I can just see that this is exactly what you were supposed to do in life. So uh, thank you for taking thank a chance you. on an active duty soldier. We're not all that bad ladies, ladies, we're not bad. I know we move <laughs> around and kind of crazy, but uh, you get a chance to, to, to meet some of the best people uh, you'll ever meet in the world uh, on this, on this ride that we call uh, the military. So, uh, thank you for being on the show. We appreciate you uh, for coming on board, giving us a, you know, a few minutes of your time. And, and uh, this means so much to our nation's heroes, spouses, kids, everybody. You've, you've, you've loaded us with plenty of great information for our, our audience uh, to, to, to work off of and, and to get, make these transitions easier. Cause it's not, it's hard. It's hard to transition from one place to another. I know my, I grew up in, uh, well, I was stationed in San Antonio for like nine years. And so my, my my 22 year old now he was first he went from first grade to 10th grade in san antonio and i plucked him and moved him to florida his 11th wow. you know in his junior year which was tough for him it was real tough and it sucked right and he
he wasn't happy yeah. camper would be. <laughs> and so, uh, but he understands now that he's 22 or whatever the case may be, but at the time it's just, it's just a hard situation. So thank you for all that you're doing for our military community. Thank you so much for having me. I really do appreciate that. I mean, military kids are super resilient. You know, my daughter recently left for college and it was funny that she called me. She said, mom, it's crazy. I can adapt. I'm a military kid. <laughs> yeah. And that was the yeah. best thing because she always was like, I hate being a military kid. I hate moving. And she realized what it had taught her, you know, yeah. and the same with our son. I thought we were going to, cause we had high school stabilization for her. I did not think we would get it again. I'm like, nope, that's like lightning don't strike twice. Well, it did. Yeah, exactly. Our son got high school stabilization and uh, he'll be going into the service himself. Uh, so oh, we're really awesome. proud of him. And and ladies and gentlemen, don't be afraid of service members or you know starting relationships. My husband, I have to give him mad love. He is my better half. Uh, he keeps me grounded. Uh, he's such an amazing human being, great father. This is truly being a service member is his calling. Uh, I don't know what retirement will look like for him, but <laughs> you know, th th <laughs> this is where he is meant to be. And and uh, I just I wouldn't I wouldn't change a thing, even though I thought I didn't want to have anything to do with it. I wouldn't change a thing. Absolutely. So if you don't mind uh, hanging on till after the live, and then we'll we'll kind of say our formal goodbyes. But man, we wish you all the best. You got nothing but supporters here at the exchange. We love what you're doing. We love who you're doing it for. Uh, so thank you so much. Appreciate you. And uh, we're going to go ahead and end the podcast. Uh, but thank you again. Uh, and, and stay on the line. We'll, we'll, we'll say our goodbyes. Okay. Chief Chat yeah. out. Thank you.